You caught me at the perfect time. A game I recently played showed me just how much fun you can have exploring underwater. Unfortunately, this is the best I can do to satisfy my urges after playing, but you haven't played yet. Today, you're going to see beautiful sea life, vast underwater terrains, and all the mysteries drifting on the ocean floor, all from the comfort of your own home, as long as you have an original PlayStation. Grab your wetsuit and goggles, load up the harpoon, and get ready to join me on this deceiver dissection of Treasures of the Deep. Life doesn't always give us the opportunity to live out our wildest dreams, or allow us to do something reckless without any consequences. Thankfully, we have video games! I could go slay a dragon, save a planet, or be a bus driver, all within a few button presses! Treasures of the Deep provides you with the unique experience of stepping into the flippers of Jack Runyon, a retired Navy SEAL and Gulf War veteran hired by the Undersea Mercenary Agency, UMA, to comb the ocean floor for lost treasures. Along the way, you'll encounter numerous sea creatures, some, like the friendly dolphin... You are... Oh my god, dude. <laughs> I don't have my nets! Okay. Well, at least we got to be killing more animals. And others, like the vicious Great White Shark, Meddling pirates populate the waters armed with a legion of high-tech submarines and an unlimited supply of harpoons. These guys aren't here to sing shanties and tell tall tales. However, they do crave all of the treasure that they can carry and are willing to send you to Davy Jones' locker without a second thought. Treasures of the Deep was developed by Black Ops Entertainment, a studio with an interesting, albeit slim, catalog of games, ranging from early flight simulators to licensed franchise titles like Jurassic Park. They even developed some sports games, like and one street ball in street hoops. I was shocked to learn that Treasures was only their third game and published by Namco nonetheless. Although, once Leggy and I started playing, we quickly realized the quality of this scuba diving underwater action game. There's actually a current in the level one. Whoa, 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 dude. What's the purpose of that? <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Subs, fish, pirates, treasure, deep. Already, the game is delivered on what it advertised. The game consists of a total of 14 missions. Within each mission, you'll be given certain objectives to complete before you can resurface. CIA-like mission briefings before each stage aid in informing you of your tasks, as well as cementing that mercenary slash secret agent feeling you'll have while playing. Puerto Rico. She went down with a wealth of Vatican gold and religious artifacts, making the site a target for underwater pirates. Your dive objective is to retrieve the ruby-studded Vatican cross and destroy all the pirates' cargo subs. The game draws a lot of inspiration from real-life shipwrecks, while also mixing in popular ocean-related mysteries. For example, recovering lost Nazi gold in the Ionian Sea or being subjected to strange happenings in the Bermuda Triangle. The game is packed with little details that do not go unappreciated. Honestly, for a game made in 1997, there probably wasn't one besides this one where you could go from recovering a lost Vatican cross, guarded by a giant eel, to blowing up a downed US satellite at the bottom of the Mariana Trench. Heck, there probably isn't anything like that you could play today! Gameplay, and all of you knew this was coming, is quite deep, mirroring the depth you'd see in flight simulators. You're given a wide variety of weapons, equipment, and submarines to choose from. This is where the gold the player earns comes into play. Throughout the levels, you can collect treasures and rescue various aquatic wildlife to earn gold. After your mission briefing, you're able to spend that gold to customize your loadout before getting wet and starting the level. Each sub has a variety of characteristics to keep in mind and will affect your strategies for approaching your tasks. One sub may be nimble but lack the weight capacity to carry all the mines you'll need to chuck at those megalodons, so you'll have to take the slower cargo sub. Or just run for your life like a little guppy, praying you don't end up shredded runyon stuck between a hammerhead's teeth. Customization is great and increases the replayability factor of the game. However, later levels are blocked by requiring certain classes of subs in order to progress. And boy, are these subs expensive. You're picking up pirate treasures left and right, saving sea turtles and anchors, but it's gonna take quite a bit of grinding to afford the viper. But. In the meantime, you can change the color of your wetsuit and your sub, so you can at least look at something different while you replay the early levels over and over and over and over and over. It's a good thing the game looks so nice, and I sincerely mean that. 
just check out that lighting, along with all the things that are on the screen at a given time. The PS1 had to have been working overtime with this game. Control is also a slight problem area. While the inverted nature and heaviness you'll feel fit with the underwater theme, you'll inevitably be confused by what button does what. And every button does something. They were getting mileage out of the controller, that's for sure. The shoulder buttons will control the sub, and the face buttons will be dedicated to your items. But when you're in a stressful boss battle, or going up against a gauntlet of enemies, you'll be cursing Neptune that you've had your net equipped the whole time you thought you were firing torpedoes. There you go. Oh, oh yeah. no, no! The art of getting off and on your sub is one you must master. Pressing all shoulder buttons distinctly at once for a singular portion of the game, and never having to do it again unless you want to see yourself blown to pieces. This game can get pretty dark at times, and I'm not talking about when you need to equip your night vision goggles. You'll be fighting eco-terrorism in one mission, and then netting cadavers from a crashed airplane in the next. These would have been odd back then, but it was certainly weird experiencing something like this in 2020. All of these gruesome missions are not random. They stem from one maniacal mustache twirling source, Simon Black. About halfway through the game, it is revealed that this James Bond level supervillain has been behind the numerous pirates that have hunted you relentlessly throughout the game. Along with all of the terribleness you've seen, like mind strapped to dolphins. And in my mind, this guy personally did the mind strapping, and that cannot be forgiven. He even did it to penguins! Come on, man! High scores for both gold totals and time completion tend to give rise to an arcade type atmosphere, but this doesn't serve as a detriment in my opinion. You could pick up this game for short stints at a time, and as a kid, pour hours into treasure hunting and grinding out for your favorite sub. Your efforts are rewarded as well. In each level you can find mysterious Greek tablets that unlock the true final stage of the game. You're also rewarded for collecting over 95% of gold in a single level with a stage where you can play as a shark, which is pretty neat. Don't assume that this game is a cakewalk, either. It may not be the hardest game you've ever played, but you'll be seeing that game over screen plenty of times. You're given five continues for the whole game before you have to start the levels over from their beginnings. One-ups are hidden in certain areas, but you'll have to have a keen eye. Weapon power-ups, air tanks, and medkits will also be tucked around the level, so it's worth your time to give in to your inner treasure hunter. There is also an intriguing amount of cheat codes available in this game. Some get weirdly specific, too, like increasing the frame rate of the game. We tested it out, but we honestly didn't notice a difference whatsoever. But it did back out, like it... Yeah, it, it made a noise too, like... Yeah. While you explore, you'll be greeted by a fantastic score that gives life to the game. Serene, oceanic melodies will transport you straight to the Great Barrier Reef, while the start of those violent strings will let you know your life is in true danger. Sound effects are pretty realistic, and don't come off as cartoon-like at all. Sonar in one ear and time bomb explosions in the other let you know Jack Runyon does not mess around. Although, the robotic instructor voice popping in, pausing all audio, is a bit jarring. But you have the freedom to turn that off whenever you like, as well as choosing to play the game entirely in first person or third. Treasures of the Deep is a game that strikes at the core of why most people tend to play video games, for the pure fun and escapism. You're presented with a situation you'll most likely never find yourself in, and let loose in an environment that submerges you seamlessly into that fantastical role. This is certainly a game I would recommend everyone to play, purely so you can go beat the crap out of Simon Black for strapping mines to dolphins. Who does that? Search online, snag a copy. Fire up your faithful PS1, and good luck as you discover your treasures waiting out there in the deep. This secret dissection is complete. Conclusion? A game that reminds you why you enjoy playing games in the first place. A standout entry in the scuba diving video game genre, packed with compelling gameplay, a beautiful underwater atmosphere, and a fitting soundtrack. This is a game you'll certainly want to include in your PlayStation library. Also, Simon Black is a monster, and you should never strap mines to sea creatures. Bye.